Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. Welcome to New Life Kids Online. My name is PC and welcome to our series called Let's Get Real. We're in episode number three, where we take a look at the book of Ephesians and what lessons we can learn from it. We got an incredible one today and I'm so excited about jumping into it. But before we get into it, I got a question for you. Have you ever heard the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover? Sometimes we see just the cover of a book, like, oh, I don't know if I want to read that. We judge it by what it looks like and we think we know everything that's in it. The truth is, we don't. And also, there's some people who do that with people. They look at someone on the outside and they think they know everything. But we need to learn how to look through at people through God's eyes. We're going to learn all about that in just a minute. Are you ready? Let's jump into our first video. Here we go. Let's Get Real, a show all about real life. I'm so glad you decided to join us today because we have a real interesting guest. He's someone that actually works at my local grocery store. He's what we call a stalker. Please welcome to Let's Get Real, in Ventori. show in your name's actually Nicholas right yes but my friends just call me in okay in so you're a stalker at the grocery store right what exactly do you do well you see a stalker makes sure that there's plenty of stuff on the grocery store shelves people come into the store all day long and take stuff off the shelves and I come in at night and I put stuff on the shelves it's pretty standard stuff I see well, how do you know where to put all the items? I've been to the grocery store before and there are hundreds of products. Doesn't it get confusing? Yeah, you know, sometimes it does, but it helps that all of the products are labeled. I just look at the outside and see what it says and that tells me what's on the inside. <laughs> True. Have you ever had a situation where a product was labeled incorrectly? You mean what it said on the outside didn't match the inside? Right. I knew someone who once went around mislabeling all sorts of things. They put a corn label on a green beans can. They thought it was funny. That is not funny at all. That just causes confusion. Can you imagine thinking you're going to cook some corn and then you pour open the can and green beans fall out? <laughs> People should not go around mislabeling things. You're right. And that reminds me of exactly what the kids are learning about in their lesson today. The kids are learning about green beans? Well, that's kind of weird. No, they're learning how sometimes people label others. They decide they're worthless or dumb, and they put that label on them. But God says we're not supposed to label anyone, ever. You know, that is so true. Labeling others is not something we should do if we want to get real with our faith. Exactly! We must look at people through God's eyes, and He loves everyone the same. Right you are! And you know, uh, ever since you told that story about your friend changing the labels on stuff, I've been a little nervous. I think I probably need to go back to the store and, and check on all the stuff and make sure that it's labeled properly. <sighs> well, you do that. And I'm going to let the kids get into their lesson today from the book of Ephesians. This is Sophia, and I'll see you next time on Let's Get Real. Hey, Chad, I want you to go through every can of corn on the shelf right now. What you got? Do that. What do you mean? We gotta see people. 
people the way God sees them. Wonderfully made. We gotta love everybody just the same. So, every time somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. I will look at others through the eyes of God. And that right there is what you gotta know. This is Alexis saying, yeehaw! Hey kids, what time is it? Yay time! What's up, New Life Kids? We got Pastor Devin here today. And, and Pastor Mateo here today. Some might say. And we're doing game time. And we're doing the Great Pickle Debate. So the point of this game is, are you ready to debate the question, do pickles belong on this? So we're going to show you something, maybe a food, something like that, and be like, would this be better if it had pickles on it? And then we're going to pick a side, and then we're going to count the votes and declare a winner. Nice. Okay, so let's get into the great pickle debate. This one's an easy one. First one right off the bat, cheeseburgers. No what? No, no pickles? No pickles. You're going to find out my stance oh on pickles pretty quickly. Goodness. Pickles on cheeseburgers every time. Go to McDonald's, get a McDouble, ask for extra pickles. Okay. They're the best. They're called cheeseburgers, not pickle burgers. No pickles? Oh. <laughs> All right. Next one, Matt. Ice cream. Are you, are Ice cream. I hope you say no pickles. I'm that. gonna go ahead and say no pickles. Okay. That sounds a little weird. Sounds a little <laughs> gross. Your, your don't pickle juice don't think those vanilla. things match. Ugh. Maybe they have pickle ice cream. We should look I, into that. I, I hope bet not. they do. That that's probably true. They got pickles or everything. Hot dog on pickle or pickles <laughs> on hot dogs. How would that other work? way around? I think that's called relish. <laughs> And I'm going to say, although I do love pickles, I'm going to say no to I relish. I say no as well. I I've tried like... relish, not a fan. I like the crunchiness of pickles. I'm like so. just, I'm just uh, mustard and ketchup. I was going to say mayonnaise. That's gross. <laughs> mayonnaise on a hot dog? That's, <laughs> That's weird. That's wow. disgusting. Bacon and eggs. <sighs> no. I'm going to go with no. But bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich, a pickle on the side can be nice, but not bacon and eggs. No, that's gross. That's breakfast food. So we don't the need bread that. just changes it for you? Bread changes it. All right. Yeah. Sounds add a good. little cheese, add a little bread, Chicken add a little pickles. Sandwich. Yes! I'm 100% say, add some pickles to the chicken sandwich. When I go to Chick fil A, I get a number one, no pickles. Oh, you're no missing pickles. out. It's the I'm best not part. Out. Again, it adds that little flavor, adds no. a little crunch, it tastes a little like, acidity. It tastes like socks. I don't really sushi! Like sushi? I don't like sushi to begin with. Okay, I have a debate here now. Pickles in sushi, cucumbers are pickles that haven't been pickled yet. Little fun fact for you guys. <laughs> Sushi has a bunch of cucumbers, so I say, yeah, let's add a pickle, add a little saltiness to it, some vinegar, add up salt, more of that f salty fish, and it'd be delicious. I'm gonna say yes. Let's add a pickle. Just made a, a bad food worse. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I could do. Ugh. No. That's no like, to pizza. Pizza cheese, is the best. Cheese. Cheese. Cheese pizza is the greatest food ever. Pepperoni pizza is second greatest food ever, and we don't want to mess those up. So no. Switch around. No pickles on pizza. Peanut butter and jelly. All right, this is getting a little out of hand. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is, is getting not, a little crazy. It's I'm, not a pickle butter and jelly. It's a peanut butter and jelly. It's a classic. Pickle butter and Don't jelly. Don't want to mess it up. Whoa. <laughs> Imagine a little pickle butter on a <laughs> Ugh. cheeseburger. Well, that'd probably just be relish <laughs> with mayonnaise or something. <laughs> I don't know, but it sounds good. I'm in. Peanut butter, jelly, and oh pickles. My gosh. Add it all up. That's Let's do crazy. it. Tacos. Tacos. No. You cannot mess up a classic like Don't that. Don't do it. Don't Tacos are the best, besides cheese pizza. Don't do it. Pickles question do not is, belong on there. Hard shell or soft shell? That's an easy question. It's soft shell. Oh my gosh, this guy's crazy. What? Just get a burrito. All right, that's right. a whole other debate. We're gonna have to come back for that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Last one. Okay. French. Let's fries. not get out of hand putting pickles on chips. No. All right. French fries are classic because they're already salty. Have you had the pickled potato chips though? That's a real thing? Yeah, and they're delicious. This is so I'm gonna say, yeah, let's get a little pickle dust, throw them on the fries, ramp it all up, add it to the list. So good. 
So none of these were able to entice me to want pickles because I actually hate pickles more than anything in the entire world. But Devin tried out some really weird foods this week, so we're gonna we'll send him just a bunch of pickles. Send me a foods. bunch of jars of pickles. Yeah. I love it. I love pickles, they're delicious. But that's it for game time. You guys are jumping into a time of worship, so get ready, stand up, get ready get for hyped up. awesome time in God's presence in worship, and we'll see you next time for game time. Peace! <laughs>
darkness, my God, that is who you are.
All right, you know what time it is. It is time to go get your Bibles. We're gonna be 10 seconds. If you already got it ready to go, just hang tight for 10 seconds. But for those who forgot their Bible or haven't got that yet, make sure to go get a Bible. We'll give you 10 seconds. We're gonna jump into our story. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you got your Bible ready to go. We're gonna be looking at Acts chapter 10, or if you got one of these fire Bibles, page 1,417. Let's jump in. Our story begins today, and we see that Peter has had a vision from God, a dream while he was sleeping, and where God showed him a vision of a blanket coming down from heaven that had a bunch of animals on it. God told Peter to kill one of the animals and to eat him. This was the kind of food that Peter had been taught to never eat. Peter was so offended. He couldn't believe that God was asking him to take that kind of food and to eat it. He told God, I have never eaten any food like that that is impure. And God told Peter, do not call anything impure that I have made clean. This happened three times and then Peter woke up. Through these dreams, Peter realized that God was trying to teach him an important lesson. You see, Peter had a big problem. He and the other disciples had bad feelings about anyone who was not a Jew by birth. They had told the Jews about Jesus, no problem but they refused to share the good news of Jesus with the Gentiles, people who were not Jewish by birth. Peter was one of the main disciples who dealt with this prejudice or choosing not to love others because they're different. Right after Peter woke up from his dream, there was a knock at his front door. There were men at the door who were servants of a man named Cornelius. One of them said, my master Cornelius would like to see you. So they took Peter to Cornelius' house. Cornelius was not a Jew, but God had told him to bring Peter to his house so that Peter could tell him all about Jesus. Peter realized that God was trying to teach him through those dreams that God loves everyone the same. Peter told Cornelius' his family, I now realize that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation. It was a powerful moment. And Peter prayed with Cornelius' his entire family to accept Jesus that day. It was a miracle. It only happened because Peter chose to treat others just like God does. He showed love to Cornelius and his family, even though they were different. And that's what each one of us should do as well. In our lesson today, we're learning all about just how important it is to see others the way that God sees them, not to judge a book by its cover, but to see people just like God does and to love them the same as he does as well. Man, what a cool story today, talking about let's get real. You know, the church in Ephesians was filled with all different kinds of people, sort of like your school or your neighborhood or our church. It's filled with all different kinds of people. But you know what, here's the awesome part. God loves those people just the same. And I would just love the opportunity to just uh, pray with you today. So let's get doing that, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this incredible day and this awesome story about Peter and Cornelius today. I am so grateful, God, today that you love everyone. But what's even more cool is that you love everyone the same. So because I have glasses doesn't mean you love me more than someone who doesn't have glasses. Or because I have blue eyes, you don't love me more than you love someone who has brown eyes. God, I am so grateful and so thankful today that you love every person the same and you care about us all the same. That's just an amazing character trait that God, I hope uh, that we grow more and more to do each and every day is to love everyone the same as you love us. How cool it is, God, that <clears throat> also you, you never label others. You never look at someone and say, oh man, he's no good. Oh man, she's a liar. Oh man, he's a, he's a thief. You don't label us that way. You look at each of us the same and you love us the same and you never label us. Man, the Ephesians church was full of all kinds of people and some of them were Jews by birth, some of them were Gentiles by birth, some of them, uh, some of them were male, some of them were female, some of them were adults, some of them were kids, all these different, some of them were rich, some of them were poor, but you didn't label them that way. You didn't say, oh, over there, that's where all the Jewish people sit, or over there, that's where all the, all the ladies sit. Like you love them all the same, 
and you never labeled them. What an important, important lesson for us to learn. And Lord, lastly, I, I'm so grateful and thankful today that you have reminded us through this story of Peter and Cornelius that we must look at others, not through our eyes, because we fail, we make mistakes, we're human, but we have to look at others through your eyes. We must get rid of the labels and begin to look at others the way that you see them, because you see everyone as important. You see everyone as worthy of your love. And so God, can you help us to, to love others that same way? To help us to see others the way that you see them. I know, Lord, that we make mistakes and we fail, but we all do that. And if we look at other people's faults and don't look at our own faults, we're not looking at other people the way that you look at them. Let us see other people through your eyes. Let us love other people through your eyes and help us to begin to show everyone, everyone that we know God's love. And we'll give you the praise and the thanks. In your name we pray. Amen. to come up with a brand new compound. Sometimes the results are astounding, but sometimes I just blow things up. Well, never mind that though. Today I have been tasked to teach you today's power verse. And today's power verse says, now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. Ephesians 2.18. Well, wasn't that such a super excellent verse? Of course it is. It's from the Bible. But I think I can make it even better by mixing this chemical with this chemical. Hmm. Clearly, I have had a bit of a mishap. It appears that the chemical reaction has altered the power verse in some way. Several of the words of the power verse are missing. I must have blown them up. Well, of course I did. It is what I do. Well, let's see if we can remember which words have disappeared. Let's read the power verse again together. On the count of three. One, two, three. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. Ephesians 2.18. Very, very well done. I am so proud of you for remembering those words. It is a very excellent use of your medulla oblongata. Well, that is all the time I have today. It is time to get back to mixing more chemicals. I am Dr. Van Hinkelsnat, and I will see you next time when we learn an important power verse. Bye-bye. Well, howdy, partners. What you got now? Man, what a fantastic episode this week, week number three. Cool story about Peter, you know, Peter the Rock and Cornelius. Awesome story. I hope you were paying attention. If you missed any of it, rewind, check it out. But here's what I want you to do. We're closing in on the end of our episode, so you know what that means. It means gather everybody around and get chatting about what you talked about today. Do a little debrief and see if there's not something that you guys learned that maybe somebody in the else in the room missed. You guys can share your ideas of what you learned about Peter and Cornelius today in episode three here at New Life Kids Online.